Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, the perfect pyrite, a giveaway in July, and knives that are great, fixed blade knives for summer weight carry. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. This week, my favorite comment was from Dragon Rasp. And this comment came on the Just the Tip video I put out. And it was about the fact that uh, even if the swedge of a Bowie is dull, um, you use it. To, you can use it to great effect in knife defense. And he said, I've been teaching Kung Fu for decades and never came across this piece of info. Great video. I teach a lot of knife defenses and this style of flicking the wrist attack would be very effective. Not much you can teach a person to counter that. Thank you, Dragon Rasp. Uh, and and I, I appreciate that comment because um, uh, it is info that I got from somewhere else. I, I am not out there Bowie knife fighting, but it's interesting information that comes from trusted sources. So I decided to pass it along and, and illustrate it. And uh, here's someone who got something from it. And I appreciate it. I appreciate that because I think frequently the instinct is to be, is to comment like on a video like that. Say, how do you know, man, how many Bowie knife fights have you been in? And yeah, true. You know, I also haven't uh, flown a fighter plane, but I know some things about those too. So um, thanks again, Dragon Rasp, and thank you one and all for watching the videos and commenting, and uh, I really appreciate the engagement. All that being said, I think it's time for a pocket check. Well, today in my front right pocket, this one has been hard to kick out ever since Blade Show. I had the American Blade Works Model 2. Look at this beauty. Uh, this Model 2 is uh, titanium milled uh, with Magna Cut, and I am just in love with the look of this thing. Uh, it has a sort of Art Deco look to me, sort of uh, early 20th century uh, fashion uh, or, or design, I guess I should say. I always say it reminds me of the Chrysler building, something about it. Uh, just a beautiful looking knife, open and close. Uh, but but besides that, it actually has an incredible blade. It's Magna Cut, my first Magna Cut knife. And I should say my first, this is on loan, but I am definitely buying it for him, from uh, Michael Martin, who loaned it to me. It is, it is a really great, great cutter. It's deceptively sharp on the edge. Uh, not that, I mean, not that it doesn't seem like it should be, but it, it is like the kind of edge that touches you and and cuts. It's really, really excellent. I've used it for a number of things. And the more I use it, uh, the more I carry it, the more the pocket clip is beginning to become my own. If you know what I mean, how, how things get marred, uh, how pocket clips get marred. And uh, so definitely, definitely looking forward to um, my own actually. And then that way, um, I can feel free to carry it all the time, get get some nice patina on it. Not that uh, it's going to patina, but you know how a knife kind of wears into your own um, your own uh, style of carry. Also, I forgot to mention, he really dialed in the action incredibly on this Model 2. My Model 1 uh, is a great knife, but the action just isn't quite there. Uh, that was the Model 1 version 5. He took it to the version 6, and every version 6 I've uh, I've experienced has been butter smooth drop shut kind of thing and that's what he got on this uh very excited about the american blade works model 2 uh okay so next up in my pocket i had the jack wolf knives this this is another one i can't get rid of this not get rid of it but get it out of my pocket it's the gunslinger jack it's it's an exciting revolution i gotta say uh jack wolf knives um, venturing into locking knives after 13 models of slip joints. Uh, they, uh, Ben Belkin took a, a surprising turn and went to locking knives. So he's got these beautiful bolster lock um, gun stock jacks. Uh, so yeah, they are flippers. They are front flippers. They have amazing action, incredible uh, ergonomics. Again, uh, as I talk about all the time, the ergonomics 
of the Jack Wolf knives are great because they're single bladed knives. You really get to feel the contours of the different styles of handle. And I've really grown to love the Gunstock Jack from the first release, the very first release. <clears throat> the sharpshooter uh, this scales up a bit with a 3.25 or 3.23 inch blade uh, very nicely hollow ground and fullered on both sides s90 v blade uh, that beautiful clip point design at a really really excellent front flipper and also um, middle finger flipper and also slow roll thumb and just any way you want to open this thing it's incredibly fidgety uh, incredibly sturdy, robust, thin, slicey, incredibly thin and slicey. I mean, like, okay, so Ben Belkin here really nailed, nailed it. He has definitely proven himself to be a multifaceted and incredibly talented knife designer because he shifted over into this style of knife uh, designing <laughs> with with no no false moves. This thing is amazing, and I I already saw on um. Blade HQ, four of the five models had sold out the day uh, the day it came out last Friday. So this thing is a blockbuster. Uh, try and get your hands on it. I'm sure he's going to have more. He has upped his capacity. Uh, he's able to sell more knives now, which is which is excellent because these these are great. These are kind of uh, uh, blowing things up in my mind. Anyway, I have never had a sort of traditional style slip jointy flipper before, and so I, I'm. I'm loving the form, but I'm also loving how uh, how Ben did it. All right, next up on my waist, uh, also a knife from a friend, T. Kell Knives. This is from uh, Tim Kell. Uh, this thing is awesome. This is the Night Stalker. This comes in three different varieties. There's a combat grade, which is thicker. Uh, I, I don't remember the measurements, but it's got a slightly thicker blade stock. And then there's the original, and then there's another one. And I can't remember what the other one is. This is the original. Uh, full swedge on this perfect drop point blade. Uh, you can see it's a it's a thick blade. It's a thick-ish blade stock um, and a nice grind that comes thin behind the edge with a tall um, cutting edge. That relief edge is nice and tall. So that you know naturally means it's like super sharp and... This uh, is covered with nickel boron, uh, that coating there makes it real slick. Uh, that's borrowed from the gun industry and I think aerospace. And this is AEBL stainless. Uh, a lot of the knives uh, from TKL knives are carbon. And I love high carbon steel blades, but uh, he's excited about some of the stainless offerings. Really awesome three color camo handle with the, um, with the milling in it. He calls it grenade milling really makes it a great grip this knife works great with or without the ring you can't say that about all knives with rings frequently uh, a ring knife for me is just a ring uh, a knife with a wider pommel and uh, i like to hold knives like this too you know and i definitely prefer in, in the uh, forward grip not to put my pinky through the ring um, but uh, yeah really nicely done nicely designed and this one uh, with this micro sheath really sits uh micro sheath and also a discrete carry clip that he designed uh with him um really sits nicely and flatly on the front and a t-shirt just a t-shirt draped over it will um will obscure it and cover it with very little to no printing uh last up one that i've been fidgeting with uh, i love this knife this is the pony stout uh from our friends lefty and colin at Devo Knives. Uh, this thing's really cool. Uh, they loaned me last year when it first came out, they loaned me the Stout, which I liked a lot. Uh, it was bigger version and a bolster lock style knife. Uh, but this one here, I got to say, uh, in the smaller version uh, is just the bee's knees. And I, I rarely take the small version over the large version, but this is, uh, this is really excellent. Very thinly uh, ground. Uh, 14C 28 and blade steel here, contoured G10, um, really nice action, very nice to fidget with, and very nice to use. That point uh, of the point here of this uh, sheep's foot, sheep's cliff, uh, I'm not sure what that is, uh, Warren Cliff or sheep's foot, but the tip looks nice and rounded, uh, very unthreatening. But I got to say, that point, that tip there does get into whatever I've needed to get into so far to include clamshell packages it's got a nice coating on there uh, that hasn't been marred yet i've used this quite a bit 
since they gave it to me. This was a gift. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate that. And uh, I see why you, why you want to get these into people's hands. They are great knives. That's the Pony Stout from Devo Knives. I think you can just go to their website and buy them. And I, they might be else. Oh, White Mountain Knives, I think they're an exclusive. Oh, you know what? Uh, talking out of school here. Uh, look them up. You can go to their uh, Instagram and find out. That's uh, the Devo Knives Pony Stout. And uh, that's the American Blade Works Model 2, the Jack Wolf Knives Gunslinger Jack, and the Night Stalker from T. Kell Knives. These were the knives I had with me today. What were the knives you had with you today? Uh, let me know. Do you do a wardrobe change when you get home? I'm not just talking about uh, getting out of your monkey suit from work, but um, I mean also changing your knives. Uh, this is something I might do a little bit of, but I never change the main actor. The uh, front right pocket never changes. That goes from from dusk or from dawn till dusk, or, you know, from night moment I wake to the moment I go to bed. It's only right. Okay, so. Next, I want to talk about, just show off the uh, knife we're going to be giving away on Thursday Night Knives on Ju um, July the 6th, two days after the 4th of July. Uh, I'm excited to give this away. This was given to the channel by Olight a few months back, and I've been holding on to it, holding on to them. And it, actually, it's a two knife or a two um, implement <laughs> giveaway here. Uh, first, it's the uh, flashlight that I love from um olight i have a bunch of these um kind of i have like four of them i guess uh the i3t the eos flashlight and this one of course anodized with old glory i love that great thing about these uh not uh, about these um lights now i don't have batteries in this one so I, i'm not going to show it off but great thing about these lights too uh, you've got a low and a high setting and then that clip that you see folding back uh, works great as a pocket clip but also fits great on the bill of your cap. If you're wearing a baseball hat and you need some light, say you're just trying to get the rest of your truck loaded up uh, before you head on out, you just slip this on the bill of your hat, turn it on, and you have a headlamp. So I love that feature on this and many other flashlights, uh, but it, it only makes sense on small light ones. You can't have you know big heavy flashlight hanging from the bill. Next up, this thing is awesome. They really nailed the crossbar lock uh, on this this knife this is the rubato 2 uh, by o knife the o o knife the o light knife uh brand as you may imagine really really excellent action on this swings shut or you know swings on those bearings uh very nice and uh, a a great 154 cm blade it's really thin and this thing's going to cut great this it reminds me a lot of the uh model 2 i just had out a little bit of belly uh, to the blade and a little bit of an upward swoop putting the tip kind of in the middle, which is a good place for uh, for it, but still down below so you can use it in those kind of uh, utility cuts. And then, of course, you have that aluminum anodized handle with uh, the American flag. I think it's really cool, uh, kind of interesting coming from a Chinese company, but, uh, you know, why, why should it be? Very, very nice uh, bit of kit here will be given away on july 6th thursday night knives so definitely join us then and uh, that will be available to anyone who is capable of typing hashtag knife maybe it'll be knife light it'll probably just be knife into the comments that's it and then you go into the random number generator and boom we decide a winner all right, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at Knife Life news. And then in the state of the collection, since I didn't get anything new this week, I want to take a look at some wood handled folders coming up. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So a recent knife that has really perfected, in my eyes, the button lock uh, is the CJRB Pyrite. Of course, everyone knows and loves the Pyrite. They came on like a storm. Uh, they sent me one, uh, a very vanilla version with G10 and the drop point blade. And I remember thinking and even saying at the time, 
this is soulless. And then I started flipping it and and opening it and closing it and fidgeting with it. And it quickly became one of my absolute favorite uh, all time budget knives. It's such a great little knife. And then they almost immediately came out with an even more appealing worn cliff, which has the perfect angle to the tip. And um, mm, I love that knife. Uh, a buddy of mine at work got one in all black uh, that he showed me um, after I showed him my pyrite. And I became immediately jealous. I was like, my gosh, I need to get one of those. Uh, and then, so they just came out with uh, an interesting concept here. And it's a Kickstarter project, which is interesting to me, coming from CJRB slash Artisan, which is a uh, what I would consider a big company. But what the, what do I know about their their structure of how big they are. I, I don't. Uh, so they're they're doing this Kickstarter program. They've already exceeded their ten thousand uh, dollar goal here, uh, but they have created four different tiers of this beloved knife, this uh, pyrite. And those four different tiers are um, the daily driver, which, as you can imagine, is the 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 uh, lowest tier, if you will, with an AR RPM nine blade uh, in that Warncliffe shape that you're seeing on screen with g10 handle scales uh, or steel okay daily driver uh second is the enthusiast Ooh, i'm i'm interested i'm listening uh that has the ar rpm 9 blades with titanium handles okay uh third level the connoisseur oh really uh is damascus or i would imagine it'll be damasteel i think and wood inlays uh on titanium very nice we like wood, and I mentioned I'm going to show some wood later. Uh, oh, uh, and the aficionado is the fourth tier, and that is S90V with titanium and inlays of either exotic carbon fiber or micarta. So really, really nice. Uh, I've seen these on a couple of the bigger channels like uh, Neve and um, Max Level EDC. Um they sent these uh, bundles out and people are showing them off and they look cool. And there are a number of, of choices here at, at each tier. So uh, a, a potential of a lot of pyrites in the mar in the secondary market coming up here in a few months. So keep your eyes peeled. This is really cool. I think it's a cool project. And um, I, I, uh, I, I think I'm kind of charmed that it's a Kickstarter project. Because it just goes to show that they have a great idea and they can't leverage it completely on their own right now. And so they're going to the public to see how, uh, uh, you know, if it'll stick. And I think it will. Uh, I might have to check that out. I know I say these. I, I, I overcommit on these shows. I talk about Knife Life News. I get excited about a story. Oh, I'm going to have to get one of those. And, you know, 90% of the time it doesn't happen. A man can only get what a man can get. Next up from Burnley, Lucas Burnley, um, a, a, a um, what's the word I'm looking for here? He's kind of a mysterious character to me. I've reached out to him a number of times. I, I would love to talk to him. He, he, he has designed a lot of knives for some big companies and he's got a, a thriving custom uh, career, it would seem. And, uh, and he does a lot of good stuff for the community. And I, just always thought he'd be an interesting guy to talk to. And, uh, but anyway, uh, Luke, Lucas Burnley has a new one with Boker Knives. It's called The Bend. And uh, this is this has the, uh, the BMW Z4, I think that car is called, uh, Syndrome, which is to say it's really cool looking, but man, think of how cool it would be if you stretched it out. Uh, I really like the look of this. Um, Ben Schwartz is calling this a drop point. I'm calling it more of a bellied worn cliff. Uh, this is a really nice looking blade and an overall package. It is a budget knife. It, th this is GRN we're talking about, coated D2 blade steel. You got that flipper and thumb disc, a combination that I love. I'm a lo I love the thumb disc. Uh, you have anodized uh, a pocket clip and um, backspacer and pivot collar, a nice little, um, nice little, Lux touches on a on a rather um, you know budgety EDC knife. This thing, I think, to me, uh, is exciting looking. It has potential. I, I guess is what I mean. This is a knife that would look cool dressed up. This would look great in titanium with bolsters, that kind of thing. It would also look great elongated, um, or, or put some micarta. You know, GRN. Uh, you know, it's going to be thrust into a tier that most of us. Are, are maybe less interested in in 
aspiring for. Let's put it that way. Uh, but a uh, good looking knife. Uh, Lucas Burnley is known for making good looking knives. He's also known for knocking it out of the park with companies like Boker and CRKT. All right, next up in Knife Life News, and this is news, it's the Jack Wolf Knives uh, Gunslinger Jack. I was just showing it off and talking about it, but uh, just to get to the specs and stuff like that, things I, I generally tend not to do. Gunslinger Jack, an exciting first locking folder from Jack Wolf Knives and no stumble whatsoever. He absolutely uh, nailed it. I was watching uh, Jared's video yesterday and um, he had uh, a ding and and that is my only ding also, which is a um, a slight lack of access to the lock bar. It feels like you got to kind of cram your your finger in there to to uh, unlock it. Uh, but that is like if I have to reach for something, uh, because even though there is no cutout there and there's chamfering there, so you can you can get your thumb in there. It's not it's not a big deal at all. But if I were forced to come up with something. Um, that's what it would be also. This thing is amazing, uh, but getting to it, first locking uh, knife, blasted titanium with the three flutes on the bolster up top and the one flute back. I love that look. I love the three flutes. Uh, he's done that on several other the knives. Uh, I think the, the, the Midnight Jack uh, being one of them. But uh, that blasted titanium, again, so gorgeous as, as it is per usual. But in this one, when you look at it from the... Um, from the bottom aspect uh, or from the opening side, I guess uh, it, it just looks different because you see the lock coming in and then you turn it to the side and you see the clip. So the first Jack Wolf knives with a clip, this has ceramic bearings, hollow ground S 90 V um, and 3.25 inches. Uh, now you can get a pocket slip from him. This does not fit the, uh, pocket slip that has shipped with every other Jack Wolf knife uh, because this is a little bit bigger. Um, so, but if you prefer slip carry, you can take that. You have to remove the scale, um, but you, you can take because the hardware is hidden. Take this off, put in the filler tab that ships. That's uh, in the that ships with it. That's in the same color, and then buy a an aftermarket slip from Jack Wolf knives. It's branded Jack Wolf knives from several i think he's using two different leather makers i have to investigate that because i want the option as a matter of fact i want to get it uh but not remove the clip i would still keep it in there with the clip um, but just a great knife i'm i'm um uh, this this is gonna sound strange but i'm proud of ben belkin not proud like i taught him something or proud like he's my son or proud but i'm proud to know him and proud to have been um uh, uh, his friend during this period of time where he developed Jack Wolf knives and, and, and then to see this, this quantum leap in his designing prowess, uh, makes me excited. It's like when, uh, when Joe Pesci gets made in Goodfellas, like, you know, everyone's excited. Everyone's excited. Look at what he can do. Uh, so anyway, very happy for you, sir. Uh, you will, you will do well. And prosper. I look forward to new handle shapes with the lock. I look forward to new um, blade shapes with the lock. But I also look forward to more slip joints. This doesn't mean uh, that slip joints are over, I don't think. Okay, next up, um, uh, another great guy that we've talked to here um, from Who Knives. Who Knives uh, out of uh, uh, Carl Pearson out of um, Great Britain designing these. He's a knife enthusiast in, in Great Britain, which we know is not an easy thing to be. And uh, so he designed some knives that he can carry in Great Britain, but still have some of the hallmarks of the, of the um, tactical folders that he loves. And this is his latest. He's got, uh, this is his fourth model. Uh, this is forthcoming, but this is his fourth model. He's got a, a V1, two and three, which all kind of are similarly themed in that they're the double ball detent style this is his first one using the back spring uh slip joint style and uh, as you can see it is a uh man it's a very tactical looking design to me this could be a spider co almost and i'm not saying uh i'm not saying this is derivative in any way but i see a 50 50 choil which is a great thing to have on a non-locking uh but somewhat hard use folder like this to to keep the blade in place but it also is a visual uh reminder to me of spider co knives beautifully contoured handle a little bit more contoured 
than we than we've seen in the past from uh, Carl's designs. I really like it that uh, those ergonomics look really great. Uh, and then that uh, very robust looking blade shape. Uh, this is, um, uh, oh, oh, and also something I wanted to mention about this back spring, which is the, if you wanna go a little bit heavier duty on your non-locking folder, uh, that is a uh, slip joint is a good way to go as opposed to that ball detent because you're getting a lot more pressure on the tang of the blade uh, coming down from that spring as opposed to just a ball sitting in a little pocket uh, milled into the blade tang. So cool, exciting new uh, um, uh, knife coming from Who Knives. I'm excited for Carl. I like. I hope to see this uh, company take off. I know that, that there are a lot of uh, knife enthusiasts in Great Britain, and I know that their laws are very, mm, uh, well, not very friendly to those knife lovers like us. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some of the wood-handled folders. Well, just four wood-handled folders uh, folders uh, that I'm really, I, I love, and uh, I want to get more wood in my uh, knife collection. And then coming up after that, great summer weight EDC fixed blade knives. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So this uh, morning, uh, as I was readying myself for work, uh, I was trying to pick what I was going to carry. And I didn't end up carrying any of these, but I went down the wood rabbit hole. Um, and, and I realized I don't have as much uh, wood handled, as many wood handled knives in my collection as I thought I did. Uh, now, what do I like about wood handled knives? It's the warmth. I, I do like natural materials on knives, especially those that tend more towards uh, the, tr the traditional. Um, but it is the warmth in both look and feel that uh, is a huge turn on. And this came on with, let's see, I guess I, I should say this became formalized in my tastes uh, when Finch Knives sent me this uh, over a year ago at this point. This is the Buffalo Tooth. And uh, it's their big uh, folding version of the of the this sort of large sunfish style knife. Um, just really an excellent knife with a very very sharp, thin, slicey, tall 154 cm drop point. A really great knife. But this was their first, I believe, with titanium. So these are titanium. There's a titanium frame and uh, bolsters here. And uh, this came in a full titanium a mother of pearl or this um, cocobolo wood. And they sent this to me. I, I didn't have a choice, but I, I, I realized how excited I was about this, even over the jigged titanium uh, model, because to me, this looks like a gentleman's knife through and through, but it defies our usual definition of gentleman's knife as being slender uh, and thin. So very, very psyched about this knife when it came. And it was that look that Cocobolo, which is such a rich, um, you know, rich, deep wood. And to set it down on my nightstand next to my leather wallet and another knife, uh, it just looked good. Uh, so that it's that wooden, um, wooden thing also makes it look old, makes it look like it's something out of uh, the Old West to me. That's why I put that with my Old West character in last week's show. Okay, another one. Uh, that really got me excited is the um, when I was looking to finally get myself a uh, Civivi Praxis, it had to be this because of how good it looks. It's the um, okay, the Cubertia, Cubertia wood. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it, but it is a beautiful, rich uh, wood. It re it's a very warmly colored wood. And then having it next to that uh, tumbled black finished blade just um, just sold it for me. And then having it in hand, there's micro milling on here, uh, because they milled these out, 
on CNC, and you can you you almost almost can sense a texture there, um, but it feels great in hand. This wood, it's smooth, uh, it's warm, and then you have um, you say warm. Why do you keep saying warm, Bob? What I mean is like if you were to have first of all, it just feels good in hand, like my Carta, but also like my Carta. If you were to have this in your pocket uh, in cold temperatures, you pull this out. It's not going to feel like carrying a metal handle. It's going to feel warmer in the hand um, and will warm to your hand quicker. Um, and and also just in terms of the the visual tone, uh, very nice. So uh, what um, what do you call it? Civivi and Sencut does a really nice job with their wood handled knives, and I'm glad that companies have have done a lot uh, to 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 bring that uh, natural material back into modern knives uh i would like to get for instance a um an emerson with a wood handle he does a lot of cool stuff the smatch it this one was a gift from dave the smatch it from boker a an amazing knife but with that beautiful and this is rosewood uh rosewood like on the fretboard of a guitar just beautiful uh and feels warm again and i'm gonna stop using that smooth and feels great in hand um, with the fluting is grippy, but even without that fluting, wood also has a grippiness to it um, that as long as it's not too highly polished, uh, it just doesn't, it, it feels secure in hand. Of course, you got great ergonomics with this knife. That's a VG10 blade, um, bayonet ground uh, with the, basically it's a dagger grind uh, also, but bayonet ground and that uh, this top relief stops short. A uh, really great action. on. <laughs> You wouldn't know it from my left hand, but a really great action on this thing and uh, just the sumptuousness of wood. And I do believe that sumptuous is a word you can use with wood. Last up, this is the one that that got me really thinking about it. The Cetus from Orion Knives. Uh, this was a gift of oh, the Cetus from Orion Knives. This was a gift to me um, from David Cam at Blade Show. Thank you, David. This is so cool. He knew I loved this knife. Uh, and I know he was uh, getting it in the hands of of people who were going to talk about it. But he also knows I love this knife. He loaned it to me in the past when it was a prototype. And I, I raved about how it reminds me of a Gununting, the downward sickle shaped sword from the southern Philippines. And uh, but how efficient a cutter it is with that with that straight blade. Uh, it is not a, a hawk bill. That's just sort of a visual trick due to the, the overall arcing shape of it. So that overall arcing shape gives that straight edge a downward cant, which really makes it an outstanding cutter and slasher and poker and everything else just makes this thing awesome. But it's also cool to look at and it's got this beautiful Amboya wood, Amboya. Amboya burl? I mean, I don't know, that kind of looks like burl wood to me, but uh, then again, I don't know really what Amboya wood normally looks like. So. Burl or not, this Amboya is gorgeous. And again, next to the black of the blade, it's it's a really uh, visually appealing thing. So I'm going to look forward to getting new, um, more wood uh, wood handled knives, especially the folders. Uh, I do have a couple of um, of Bowies, and actually, I'm going to be setting up out upon a a, a the long awaited chore or task no chore and task make it sound like it's not fun i'm going to be rehandling my black mule bowie with some of the uh walnut that byron kennedy a uh, byron kennedy uh patron and friend of the show sent me some amazing walnut wood that i'm going to be rehandling my uh black mule bowie with so i'm very excited about that there will be more wood in my life and all that that implies. Okay, so uh, next Knife Junkie, Gentleman and Junkie Knife giveaway will be during Thursday Night Knives on July 20th. I just wanted to uh, underline that because Jim uh, flew that up on screen. All right, last up, I want to talk about uh, summer weight uh, fixed blade everyday carry knives. I talked about summer weight fixed blade carry folders a few weeks back. And uh, I think I called them spring weight at the time because I was starting to wear shorts. Uh, but we are in shorts season here, and that does change carry for me. So I wanted to talk about some of the knives that I have uh, that are available that are great for um, carry. Now, this does involve, uh, does include some custom knives, but they're all uh, within reasonable realm. And what I mean by that is, you know, under, under 
under 200 bucks um maybe under 250 bucks but i don't even think it goes up that high and i say that's reasonable realm because these lists often include folders that are twice that so um let's get into it but before we do i want to i want to put out some caveats like here is a lightweight fixed blade knife that is not on the list it is a polymer knife from cold steel it is sheathless and uh you know in a last ditch you could tape it to your leg uh, and, and drop your pant leg over it and, and use it. Uh, but that's, that's not on the list. There are knives like this that are not on the list, like, um, this little shard, this little scalpel knife, uh, from Fudo Forge, uh, or also kitchen knives that have been turned towards tactical purposes like the Elvia, um, are not on this list. Um, here, this one could have made the list, but uh, I just received it and it's on loan, so I can't speak to it much. And then lastly, a knife like this, uh, the uh, Williamson, uh, Marcus Williamson um, or uh, WM Steelworks Merlin. This is an awesome little fixed blade knife, uh, but it is 100% pocket carry in this beautiful stout leather sheath, which is great in the fall in a pair of Carhartts or, or in a pair of jeans, but in a pair of shorts, uh, this sort of uh, it, in the pocket only carry is not my jam. Okay, so all of those caveats out of the way, let's get to this uh, list of knives here. Let me sheathe these because you know what can happen if I don't. All right. First up, a, uh, a, a modern classic, the Topps Rapid Strike. Uh, this is has been a very popular knife for Topps. It is a small... A uh, thin and slender uh, knife with a with a four and uh, three quarters inch blade that can either be um, single edged or or double edged, but it's this beautiful fighter style bayonet grind uh, with, a, like I said, a very thin profile, a great thin kydex sheath, and it, it ships with a good clip. Um, this one I ground down the handle. The handle is about another half inch. And it comes to a pyramidal peak for glass breaking. Uh, glass breaking, it just, I just didn't want it on this knife. I wanted to keep this strictly self-defensey. And uh, that means capping the pommel with my thumb. And so I ground that down and made it nice and smooth there. All right, so that's the first one, the rapid strike. And of course, I had to get mine double-edged. Any man who would do less is less than a man. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, we can't all have double-edged, and we don't all have double-edged needs like I do. Just kidding. Um, but you know what I mean. Most of us who use our knives don't want double-edged un unless we're using it to kill people. And let's face it, we're doing that. Uh, okay, so next up is from K-Bar. This is the TDI thing knife, and it's small and light, and it was uh, developed as an off- hand what did they call it offhand gun retention knife so it is it's it's set up in that pistol grip orientation uh for for gun guys for people who are more used to this form factor than uh than the regular straight knife setup so um we have this really extreme angle on the blade and it requires you to do nothing with your wrist if you're going to thrust with it you don't have to cant your wrist or change at all and if you're swiping and slashing look at that downward angle to the blade it's like having a little mini kukri in hand uh it's very slender in this uh aspect and it comes with a decent sheath now this is an older one uh, my brother gave this to me years ago i'm not sure if they have upped their game on the sheath the sheath is, is pretty thin but with this big kind of clunky metal spring clip it kind of thickens it up a little bit the way it's mounted uh, there are more modern ways to do it now, but a great knife uh, and a great small, light, uh, defensive and EDC carry. Definitely a handy knife to have. Next up, I was talking about uh, Sen Cut uh, when I was talking about the wood-handled knives, and they, ha they incidentally have a very cool wood-handled version of this next one. This is the Sen Cut Waksahashi. Waksahashi. This was a gift. Uh, from my brother-in-law, also a great uh, guy who's given me a lot of great knives. Um, this one has a beautiful clip point blade shaped much like the um, Civivi clip points, 
uh, like the, um, oh, what was it? The very first one they came out with, the Cogent, has that sort of upswept clip there. And this one's a little dirty. I carry this one and use it. Um, so, uh, yeah, this little guy got some schmutz in it I'm seeing. But you've got the natural, uh, cam uh, not canvas, the natural uh, Jade G10 here, uh, which is just dying for a dye job. I got some maroon uh, writ. I'm going to dye this one of these days. Uh, but yeah, a very, very cool knife and great in the reverse grip and very thin and slicey, very useful knife. This is 9CR18 MOV blade steel. Also, uh, you'll notice uh, the only knife in this list or any more at all where I use the uh, in the waistband retention straps. I'm pretty much, this is pretty much a, a, a discrete carry concepts family at this point but i i like this on the belt up front and these loops keep it really snug uh this is another one of those knives that uh, like the night stalker i was talking about before is um a, a nicely sized knife that hides deceptively well it hides under a shirt easily uh in that scout front scout position we got to come up with a different term for front scout i think someone said something on thursday night knives that i liked but that was Thursday night, and uh, I forgot it. <laughs> so if we have a better term for front scout carry, let me know. Next up is from Off Grid Knives. Uh, this is the uh, Hoglet. The Hoglet, a charming little pig of a knife. Uh, the Hoglet is. Uh, it's got this. Uh, it's got a very nice um, pancake style. Uh, uh, sheath very stout if you want i might if i were to make this a daily carry i might make a taco sheath out of it uh, not out of this but make a taco sheath for it i like taco sheaths better they're just smaller a smaller footprint this one comes with a kydex wrap over uh, belt loop and here you go this is a cleaver style blade with a nice uh, belly and a very decent point um, so this is a good utility knife, but it's also a good food knife. This would make an excellent um, camp prep food knife. Uh, but for EDC, again, it's got a rounded handle and an arced back. So for me, the rounded handles are essential for, um, for carry. Though I do have some recent knives that have more angular faceted pommels and they're they're very comfortable in my new sort of appendix style of carry. But in general, I go for a curved pommel, curved handle on a small fixed blade EDC knife because I'm carrying it close to my body. This one I have never never uh, set up in that uh, in that orientation, or not orientation, but in that style of carry in the waistband. This one I have used the belt clip for, which works great. This is a great round the houser, so to speak, in the summer. Uh, uh, you're hanging out in the house. It's hot. You got your shorts on, you know, and little else. This is a great one to have on on the belt. Um, comes in very handy. This is also uh, would be a great painting knife, a great chore knife. This is the uh, the um, hoglet. Oh, also, I, I forgot to mention that jimping is perfect. It goes almost all the way down the blade. So for really like tough push cuts and stuff like that, you have some great purchase on this knife. Uh, okay, so this is uh, Off Grid Hoglet. We do have a, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Affiliate link with Off, off Grid Knives because they make great knives. So check it out if you want to get an Off Grid, any one of the Off Grids, including that Hoglet. You can go to um, theknifejunkie.com slash Off Grid and it'll take you right there. And if you order a knife from Off Grid, then we get... Uh, a, a small kickback. Oh, I shouldn't call it a kickback. A small affiliate donation or whatever it is. Um, so definitely check that out. All right, next up, I was just talking about uh, how it's got to have a round handle. Well, this was one of the reasons I I, I uh, stopped myself and said, well, I do have a couple that aren't round that are really comfortable. And this is, this is one of the two I was thinking of. Uh, this is the Fire Ant from Dirk Pinkerton. Now, this is a custom handmade knife from Dirk Pinkerton, but it's in this list because I paid $200 for it. That was table price at Blade Show. So I think if you were to order one from him, it would be slightly more. But I'm putting this in the affordable realm of custom knife because um, a lot of us, myself included, tend to spend more on folders. Uh, so 
we we balk at a fixed blade costing that much but this you'll see why in a second okay so great sheath i put on the discrete carry uh clip uh dirk doesn't ship his uh or doesn't doesn't put clips on his sheaths i also have this uh little bit of tire inner tube under here i'm starting to do that on some of my uh, edc fixed blades because it keeps it it just keeps it in place you know it things can tend to reorient this just keeps it in place and with this straight handle i like it at a certain angle circumnavigating my slight pooch of a belly uh so having that um rubber there keeps it at the angle i want it all day long all right but here is the knife super nice and <laughs> super nice dude it's super nice uh really nice and light and slender but you have a uh i think that's an over four inch blade i don't know i, I hear i'll measure it using the boker smash it no it's a less than th four inch blade but it, it is a little big blade you've got uh, a sheep's foot there with three edges the top edge is sharp the front edge is sharp and the bottom edge is sharp you know i mean who could ask for more um i i really love this because i love that blade shape you know you could call it a reverse tanto and not be run out on a rail but uh i'm gonna call it a sheep's foot i love that sheep's foot blade shape so much but then you add that front edge and the top edge just makes it so wicked blue and black uh, layered rich light nicely contoured uh, he had a number of fire ants at his table fixed blades uh, they do have a fire ant um, kaiser that he designed also folder uh, but he had a number of these at his table so it's a regular model uh, in in all different kinds of dress uh, this was the only one in triple edge and uh, i like to think that maybe he he made that thinking of me knowing i'm a sucker and he's like oh i know if i just triple edge this bob will buy it uh, but I'm sure there were plenty of people there who would have gotten it if it weren't for me. I just kind of ran to his table as I did that past years. All right. So Dirk Pinkerton, you can have a handmade knife from him for relatively little. And it is 100 percent worth uh, the 100 uh, percent worth it. And he is very, very well respected by his peers. I always like to talk about that, how Sean Kendrick, a master folder maker, was like, Oh yeah, Dirk Pinkerton. I asked him who do, who do you admire, and and he said Dirk Pinkerton, and it surprised me because I didn't put them in the same category. And uh, yeah, for for his ability at free hand grinding. All right, next up, another master, another guy who's creating, in his own words, tactical art, is Bastien Cove of Bastinelli Knives. What a cool dude! Just the consummate gentleman, cool dude, making really, 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 really sweet weapony knives. This is the anomaly, a uh, one of the few ringed things that feel comfortable in my hand, um, the way that's designed. But it's it's no wonder because Bastien is a practitioner of Filipino martial arts. He's designed many many ringed knives, and he designed this one in a four knife series with Doug Markaida, also a master at the ringed knives, so uh, karambits, etc. So they know how to design that ring and put it so that it keeps your knuckles aligned and you're not uh, you're jacking up your fist. This one, of course, as you can tell, is not a traditional style karambit. This is a pical style knife. So, so the curve is going in the opposite direction of a standard karambit. And uh, so you've got that tip down edge in um, pical thing happening. Uh, you could definitely use this, carry this as I have in the past and use it for utility. Um, you know, it's it's not the most uh, comfortable setup for using it for utility, but hey, it's a knife with an edge. And if you have one knife to carry around, this would be this would this would be fine. Maybe not great for um, cutting your steak, but it'll do in a pinch. Very light and uh, thin. Again, hides under a T-shirt. That's part of this summer weight thing. And um, the. uh uh, it lies real flat and whoa, what was the last thing i was gonna sorry guys senior moment um but yeah nice and thin light oh oh and uh scout style on the front whatever we're calling that this is great for that okay next up continuing that sort of sukimaki themed uh, wrap uh, that's what makes that one a custom by the way is the sheath and the wrapping um the standard version is also really sweet i think i might like the sheath from the standard version better than the custom um, but 
you know, that's neither here nor there. So continuing with the Japanese style Sukamaki handle wrap, this one is from Bright for War, Josh Mason. Uh, you should follow him on Instagram. He does a lot of this style of knife. He's been doing them bigger, and man, they are beautiful. Some of them with hamon lines and everything. I'm showing you in the sheath because, as always, you got to show the sheath for a fixed blade knife. And this is great for two styles of carry, actually. Now, it's for a neck knife, it looks big, and it is, but something about the layout, this is a nice flat against the body neck knife. This this is and it and it's light um the only thing that uh will make me change it from a neck knife to the next style of carry is sometimes the footprint of that sheath just a little too big just a little too big so um as an alternative because generally i i neck knife it first but as an alternative this makes for a great in the waistband um uh, tension cord uh draw so so basically you have this wrapped around your belt at nine o'clock and then you snake this cordage in your waistband, tuck it down uh, in your pants, coming all the way around the front. And then this tucks in your waistband like this. You're looking down and here's your belt and here's your belly. And it just sits like this and it just rests there. And it's so thin. You can drop a T-shirt over it. You don't notice it. And this is snaking around uh, your belt. And then when you want to use it, you just pull it. And in an emergency, you pull it hard and this falls, but it's still dangling by your waist and you have the knife in hand. Uh, or you can just do it slowly and keep the sheath in place. So that's actually a great style carry. Um, but usually it starts on my neck. I love this little beautiful Quaken. Um, I think it's 1095. Um, I did have a patina on it for a while and then and then I took the patina off. This is a great steak knife. And uh, and I've gotten comments on this one, a dressy steak knife, of course, um, but you can sort of see his maker's mark. I, I accidentally kind of polished it off a little bit when I was getting rid of the patina. Beautiful ray skin uh, on that handle and then wrapped. He's really good at that cord wrapping. And uh, and then this thing here, what is that called? It's a some sort of a knot. Um, they call it like a sh Sheep, sheep's head, sheik's head knot or something. Let me know in the comments if anyone knows what that's called. Um, great, great, great knife. Very, very thin and sharp. He grinds his knives down to a zero edge. So the whole thing is the edge. Uh, and then he puts a tiny relief edge on it um, just to make it strong. But it is incredibly sharp. Josh Mason, again, uh, a maker that you can find as Bright for War or Josh Mason on Instagram, making this style of knife and uh, and others uh, larger and and uh, but you can have his knives custom, you know, for a very reasonable price. And that's the thing. That's the thing to do. Get in early on someone. Not that not that he hasn't been around a while, but get in on someone's career and someone's hobby. Some of these knife makers are hobbyists because they're they're doing other things to make ends meet. Get in on their work on the ground floor. You can get some great knives for uh, less money. And also there's that pride of ownership knowing, you know, that you have custom made knives from someone that, you know, maybe not so many people. I was way into hog tooth before anyone else, you know, like that kind of thing. Like I, I was into Nirvana before they, that kind of thing. All right, next up, Spyderco Ronin. This is a great one. Uh, this is another one that, has a gigantic footprint um, sheath and is begging for another sheath, but it's still comfortable. Like I still find myself carrying this until I get around to making myself a new Kydex sheath for it because it's so comfortable. And uh, th so it uses this uh, Spyderco uh, lock that really does not lock. What is that? Belt clip. It really works great on belts. It also works great on... Uh, sweatpants, pajama bottoms, gym shorts, you know, things that are loose and light. Uh, this knife is is good because I, I think it might be because of that broad um, wide sheath against my hip in the waistband. There's a lot of surface area there. It just sort of stays in place. It's not too heavy for those light garments. Plus, the knife is wickedly thin. I mean, this knife is incredibly thin and easy to draw. And then when you do, you have this amazing 
Warren Cliff in hand. Super hollow ground. Bob, it's just hollow ground. Yes, it's hollow ground, and uh, that's BD1 blade steel. But look at the angle at the tip. You, 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 you get that magical angle, and I need to get a protractor and figure out what it is. But you can see it across the Hinderer Warren Cliffs. You can see it across uh, uh, the um, Pinkerton Warren Cliffs. You can see it on the, the Yojimbos. And it's all this angle, and I've matched them all up, and I've never gotten a damn protractor. So someone figure it out. I'll do it. Uh, but it's the perfect angle for utility and tactical. So for a, a, a fighting thrust, that's an amazingly shaped tip because uh, you're piercing and then it's widening out pretty quickly. But the piercing is easy to do. Uh, but also with that tip, it's low. And uh, that triangular shape down low, as we all know, like a carpet knife, like a mat knife, like an exacto knife, is a great utility shape for pull cuts and that kind of thing. So, so um, really thin, but because of the broad shape and the ergonomics of the handle, it it's very secure, very uh, very sure in hand. And then you have that thumb swale. This is just a great knife and and inexpensive. Uh, the the Spiderco Ronin is much less expensive than say it's Folding Brothers, the uh, Yojimbo. Yo Jumbo, and soon to come the Micro Jimbo, uh, which should be cool. Uh, that is the Ronin, and plus with the BD one, you're saving you're saving money. And that's those are GRN handle slabs, so uh, you get a you get a price break on this. All right, next up now this one is one of the ones that uh, this is this was a little bit over two hundred bucks, so on the higher end of this list, but still I would argue uh, within reason for most of us who have gone over the rails one or two times on an expensive folder. All right, this is the TKL Knives Combatant, uh, a just overall small, charming, extremely capable package. Uh, so what you have with this, now I this came oriented for, for uh, sideways scout carry, and with that super thin sheath, it's great for it. But I have found for my purposes and my uh, desired style of carry, uh, this elongated um, discrete carry clip in the waistband um, appendix is is best but this this knife is great it's got a short handle uh, I can just get four fingers on it but those two deep finger choils up front with those high peaks really lock this knife in oh my god they really lock this knife uh, into place in hand so as you can see uh, my pinky you know, my hand completely covers up the pommel. Uh, it is completely buried in my fist, but I, with my size hands, can get my pinky, uh, can get good purchase with my pinky. Yours uh, may vary if you have big giant hands, but your fingers will lock into those two little swales. And regardless, you'll have an incredibly stout, wickedly sharp knife that is small uh, in overall size in hand. Plus you've got these, uh, scoops in the g10 scooped out there and just great uh, ergonomics here but also um a really nice blade shape with a swedge this is his second version of this second iteration of this uh blade and in that he he reduced some of the belly to make it a little stabbier and gave it a nice swedge for the same purpose i ordered this one with uh that beautiful sort of wood grain three layer G10. So it's got tan, brown, and black. And as it's, and it's all kind of randomly in there, it's not layered uh, in, in discrete layers. It's sort of um, um, uh, marbled in there. And then when you, you shape it, it, it adds to the swirliness. So it just looks like wood grain, just a beautiful knife. Uh, you've got the pass through screws here. So you can make all sorts of lanyard attachments and that kind of thing. Um, in the handle and again just an outrageously sharp blade uh, like the night stalker i was talking about before just just outrageously sharp i've watched him sharpen uh his knives you can see it on youtube and he's got a jig not a jig but a platen that holds the blade at the exact angle when he sharpens it so really you get a, an extremely accurate 20 degree bevel on both sides uh, i think he said it was 20 degrees awesome awesome knife that's the combatant i love this little guy the only thing against this is it's a little heavy so it's slightly heavy 
But if I can wear it in light gym shorts, it's not that heavy. Uh, if it if it doesn't bother me in light gym shorts, it's not too bad. But it's it's probably one of the heavier ones here. All right, second to last in this glorious list. Uh, one of the other ones that doesn't have a curved handle but is very comfortable to carry, and that's due to the uh, length of the sheath and the blade instead of the handle, is this auxiliary manufacturing pocket rocket. Uh, this comes in a number of different sizes. This is the three-inch dagger, but I want to show off this beautiful sheath first. Really nice uh, pancake sheath that is minimizing the uh, overall size and uh, ships with a discrete carry concept like um, clip. And oddly enough, it, it's a great clip. It works great, especially with that rubber underneath it. But discrete carry has got something on it because it just does. But a very nice clip to ship with. I like it if I absolutely need a discrete carry, I can swap it out. But I don't. This works great. All right. So uh, also, the sheath is really nice in that it's molded around the handle and retains really well, but draws really easily. Uh, I, I, I really like how this one draws. And then I'm going to put it up to the mic real quick. Listen to the sound. It's got a great, just got a really great sound uh, coming out of that sheath. But here's the blade. Beautiful. I believe it's 80 CRV2. Now I'm, now I'm forgetting what, what this blade steel is. Uh, but you have to use your eyes on this one. Just, just a beautiful knife. Uh, totally symmetrical. You've got a really well-ground, thin, precise um, dagger blade there very pointy, very sharp on the edges, very thin on the edges. And then you have this really nicely faceted and swaled um, octagonally cross-sectional handle here that is comfortable any way you grab it. Um, of course, I, I carry it um, in appendix grip so I can reach in and pull it out like this, or I can reach in and pull it out like this. Either way, um, no matter how it lands in the hand, it's comfortable. If you are using it defensively and like that sort of flat uh, grip, I'm not sure what they call that. I like to call it shovel grip in my mind, but because it, it reminds me kind of of a shovel hook punch. Uh, but if you're going to hold it like this, um, you've got a swale on the sides to pinch, like this pinch point here. If you're going to hold it in that traditional regular saber grip, you've got pinch points here and back here. And same goes for reverse grip. Um, you've got great a great pommel for capping with the thumb and really nice uh, faceting or um, swaling all the way around. So this knife, uh, though it doesn't have quillions or a cross guard, this dagger is really nicely set up for for use um, and and really uh, secure grip. Uh, hats off to uh, Michael Jarvis of Auxiliary Manufacturing. I think this is a great design. And uh, um, I'd like to get the larger one now <laughs> and the smaller one. You know, why not collect them all and a great sheath? All right. Last in the list is uh, you might not be surprised. This is the Hogtooth Knives EDC Tonto. Uh, this is um, also one of the customs in this and also can be had for 200 and don't quote me. I think it's 235 or something. Um, this one is a little different from the ones he had at his table, uh, because this one features a handle material that, he, that, uh, Matt Chase doesn't use too often. It's that alternating, uh, kydex and rubber layered, uh, material. I can't remember what it's called, but it feels really great. It's not too grippy, but you feel a little extra grip from that rubber. And it looks nice with the maroon and the black mingling. Um, but usually he uses straight G10. It's a little, uh, and then it's got the, um, Oh, I don't have, I don't have my Nova one, but it has the uh, cutouts that the Nova one has, um, the scalloped handle. But anyway, this one is very thin, very light. This is the one that really got me EDCing a fixed blade um, regularly. Uh, the E part, <laughs> you know, that every day. Um, I got this from from Matt shortly after I got my uh, my uh, sub hilt fighter and just carried it so much that's what inspired the the nova one collaboration it's just the perfect size perfect weight um perfect handle ergonomics everyone i hand the nova one to 
people are like, oh, this handle. And I'm like, that's the part I didn't design, <laughs> but they like the blade too. But the handle is so comfortable and I've put it in some giant hands at this point. Uh, dude, I train with uh, who's a, a Colossus has held this knife and loved it. It's a three finger knife for him. Uh, Imri Morgenstern over at the TKL Knives booth. He's the guy that they're doing the collaboration sapper knife with. He's a big dude. Uh, I showed him the Nova one. He loved the handle, kept oohing and on over it. And that's what you get here with the EDC Tonto. This is a regular model of hogtooth knives. Um, and it, it is spectacular. Uh, the the uh, the hollow ground Tonto blade is amazing and stout at the point. And I'm not going to go into detail, but um, Matt made one of these for uh, the Marine Corps son of a friend. And it saved his life in a room clearing operation uh, when he was tackled. So uh, you can you can put the rest of that together, but it is a very capable knife, but also the perfect uh, platform overall carry package for summer weight, uh, for sweatpants, for gym shorts, for uh, swimsuits and for everything that's light that you're going to wear in summer. Well, thank you for coming on this extra long journey uh, episode uh, of the Knife Junkie podcast. Sorry, little little senior moment there again. Great summer weight EDC fix blades. Uh, be sure to join us on Sunday for a great interview. And of course, tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast mm -hmm.